Hello everyone, and welcome to the weird, scary, and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking into Seth Gonzalez, who committed one of the most unthinkable and infamous crimes in the state of New South Wales in Australia by murdering his family. Gonzalez was born on the 16th of September 1980 in Bangalore City in northern Luzon in the Philippines to Teodoro Gonzalez, who went by Teddy, and Mary Luiva Josephine Claridades Gonzalez. He was born three years after his parents married, and in 1983 his sister Claudine was born. His father was a lawyer in the Philippines and they ran a 40-room hotel. They were devout Catholics. On the 16th of July 1990, an earthquake with a moment magnitude of 7.7 .7 and the after effect of a tsunami on the eastern seaboard of Luzon resulted in a strike-slip movement along the Philippine Fault and Dig Dig Fault. The earthquake lasted just 45 seconds and killed 1,621 people. Gonzalez was pulled out of a crushed hotel by his dad. As a result, the family emigrated to Australia and had to start from scratch. His father re-qualified as a lawyer in the state of New South Wales, set up a law firm and began working as a successful immigration lawyer. His mother became an office manager for her husband. They purchased a plot of land on 6 Collins Street in the suburb of North Ride, 15 kilometres northwest of Sydney's CBD, with Teddy Gonzalez building the house, which he completed in 2000. The family became very wealthy with an estimated $1.5 million net worth with assets in both Australia and the Philippines. As the Gonzalez children grew older, their parents became tiger parents who had high hopes and strict expectations. Despite having a passion for music and singing while attending Parramatta Marist High School, a Roman Catholic secondary school for boys located in Westmead in Western Sydney, with alumni including comedian Paul Hogan, However, he was encouraged by his parents to embark on a career in medicine or law and studied medical science at the University of New South Wales, which is ranked as the fourth best university in Australia by the QS World University Rankings 2021 and the 44th best university in the world. However, halfway through his degree at the University of New South Wales, after two years, Gonzalez dropped out and enrolled in law at Macquarie University, which is ranked, according to the QS University World Rankings 2021, as the 14th best university in Australia and 237th in the world. During this time, he also worked part-time at his father's law practice. He also began dating a girl four years his senior who his mother disapproved of. The pair argued constantly about his dating life and the family even threatened to disinherit him if he continued dating her. While studying at Macquarie University, Gonzalez struggled with poor grades, failing subjects and ended up at risk of expulsion. Ultimately, he knew he would never live up to his family's dreams of being a lawyer like his dad or a doctor. He then started to falsify his grades and provided false academic certificates to his parents before being exposed by his sister. As a result, his parents threatened to take away certain privileges, including his Blue Ford Festiva, which his parents had paid for. The Blue Ford Festiva also had a personalized number plate, Seth, his name, 80, the year that he was born in, and G for his surname. On the 10th of July 2001 at 4pm, Gonzalez left his father's law office in the outer Sydney suburb of Blacktown, where he helped on that day to fix a broken computer and headed home. At 4.30pm, he arrived at his home on Collins Street, taking a baseball bat from his car and two kitchen knives from a knife block in the kitchen. 
He entered his sister Claudine's bedroom, who at the age of 18 was studying for a high school certificate, the final high school exam in the state of New South Wales, which is utilised to determine university entry. There he assaulted her with a bat six times, compressed her neck while trying to strangle her, and stabbed her multiple times with the smaller of the two knives, killing her. Gonzalez waited until his mother arrived home, who returned at 5.30pm. He attacked his mother with one of the kitchen knives in the living room, inflicting multiple stab wounds, cuts to her face, neck, chest and abdomen, as well as crushing her windpipe. Half an hour later, his aunt, Emily, and first cousin visited the home, with the house dark and quiet, despite six dogs living in the home. Banging on the front door, she noticed movement, but decided not to enter through the garage, where she saw her sister and nephew's cars. At 6.50pm, Teddy returned home, and Gonzalez attacked his father with one of the kitchen knives, and inflicted multiple stab wounds to his neck, chest, back, and abdomen. One of the stab wounds penetrated his right lung, another penetrated his heart, and another partially severed his spinal cord. Teddy Gonzalez would ultimately die of his wounds. After killing his parents and sister, Gonzalez disposed of the murder weapons and clothing, showered, changed his clothes, and spray-painted the words F off Asians and KKK on a wall in the house to make it seem that his family were victims of a hate crime. He then drove to a friend's house, arriving there at 8pm, and the two went to the centre of Sydney, eating at the Planet Hollywood restaurant and visiting a video game arcade. Dropping his friend off, Gonzalez returned home and called emergency services at 11.48pm, telling them that he had found his family's bodies and frantically ran to his neighbour's house, telling them that his parents had been shot. He told police that he had driven home but did not go into his house at Collins Street and then drove to Kingsgrove, 20 kilometres away, to meet a friend called Sam but could not find his friend's address. A psychopathic Gonzalez demonstrated strange emotions, appearing on national television, offering a $100,000 reward for the killer to come forward. He then moved into an apartment in the nearby suburb of Chatswood, 10 kilometres north of Sydney's CBD, and put a deposit on a $173,000 Lexus SC430, telling the car dealer that he would be using his inheritance of $1.5 million to pay for the remainder of the cost of a vehicle. He also traded in his parents' cars and pawned his mother's jewellery. A compulsive and pathological liar, Gonzalez asked his godmother in the Philippines for $190,000 for surgery to remove a brain tumour, which he did not have. Two months later, on the 10th of September, Gonzalez attended his parents' funeral and sang One Sweet Day by Maria Carey and Boys to Men to the bewilderment of distraught relatives and friends who could not understand what he was doing. The New South Wales police initially believed that the murder was a robbery gone wrong, but there were a lot of unanswered questions, including no forced entry, nothing of value missing, and a three-hour duration between when the crime took place which was determined through post-mortem examinations, combined with the fact that Gonzalez's clothing only had fine smears of blood and were not soaking in blood. As a result, police started to believe that Gonzalez was involved in the murder of his family. The police found that the spray paint used in the graffiti on the wall, stating F off Asians and KKK, matched graffiti found on Gonzalez's shirt, and additionally a shoe box found in his room matched the shoes, size 7 running shoes, which were used in the attack. Furthermore, while visiting the family's home, his aunt confessed to seeing his blue Ford Festiva with a distinctive number plate, S. EF80G in the garage, despite his alibi stating that he was away at the time that his aunt visited the home at around 6pm. In December 2001, with his first alibi disproven, Gonzalez constructed a second alibi, claiming that he had taken a taxi to a brothel in Chatswood 
and that this was why he had lied. He said that he returned at home, picked up his car, but did not enter the house. He attempted to bribe a taxi driver and sex worker, who, upon questioning by police, confessed immediately that they had been bribed by Gonzalez and had not seen him on the night of the murder. A desperate Gonzalez then created a false email fabrication implicating a business rival of his father in the murders as well as the staging of an attempted robbery on the 30th of May. It was then found that this may not have been the first time that Gonzalez attempted to kill his family. In June 2001, he researched poisonous plants and bought some seeds online which he slipped into his mother's food. Admitted to hospital on the 3rd of June 2001 and suffering from bleeding to the gut, a fever and agonizing stomach pain, she was discharged for severe food poisoning despite doctors being unable to isolate bacteria or a virus as the cause of her illness. In order to divert suspicion, he sent anonymous letters to a food company, the Australian Federal Police and the Australian Federal Government Agency, the Australian Quarantine and Inspection Service, alleging food product tampering. In one typed letter, he masqueraded as a former disgruntled employee, stating three of your products have been poisoned. By now, they are on supermarket shelves. This is what you get for treating employees like garbage. Good luck finding infected cans before someone dies. Go to hell. The two letters to the Australian Quarantine and Inspection Service and the Australian Federal Police pretended to be from an anonymous employee of a food company who said that they had overheard plans to poison the food. However, while searching the room of Gonzalez on the day of the murders, police found a container in his bedroom that held a possible plant poison and a trace of his internet search history found himself researching poisonous plants. He had typed into a search engine, methods of killing, and it was there that he learned of beans that would kill in three days, causing convulsions and severe viral pain. Additionally, his fingerprints were found on the letters that he had sent to the Australian Federal Police. On the 13th of June 2002, Gonzalez was arrested, charged with three murders and refused bail. The trial took place in April and May 2004. On the 20th of May 2004, he was found guilty and on the 17th of September 2004 was sentenced to three consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. Despite numerous appeals, the most recent of which was in October 2019 and facilitated through self-representation and once again maintaining his innocence, Gonzalez remains incarcerated at the Goulburn Correctional Centre. However, 6 Collins Street gained infamy and spoke from beyond the grave. In October 2004, the house was sold to a Taiwanese couple for $800,000. However, the real estate agent, LJ Hooker, did not inform the couple and they only found out about the murders that took place through reading about them in the newspaper. The real estate agent refused to revert the couple's 10% deposit of a purchase price but eventually obliged following negative publicity and were fined $21,000 by the New South Wales Office of Fair Trading. Following this, the state government of New South Wales made it illegal to fail to disclose information that could have a substantial impact on the value of the property. In November 2005, the house was sold yet again for $720,000 to a buyer who was informed of its history and aimed to turn it into their dream home. Unable to access his family's assets, Gonzalez never received any of his family's money, which ironically, with his family threatening to disinherit him, police determined to be his main motivation for murder. On the 14th of May 2021, Gonzalez made a desperate plea for a royal pardon from the New South Wales Attorney General in hopes of regaining his freedom in time for the 20th anniversary of the murder of his family as a way to honour them. 
In a 20-page document titled Miscarriage of Justice in the Case of Seth Gonzalez as part of his appeal, he noted, I just want to honour my family on the anniversary of their death. For 20 years, the way they died has been incorrectly recorded in history. I just want to set the record straight. In his appeal, he drew a comparison to Lindy Chamberlain, who claimed that her daughter Azagia had been killed by a, a dingo while camping at Uluru in 1980. She was wrongly convicted for the murder of Azaria in 1982 before being given a pardon by the Supreme Court of the Northern Territory in 1987. The case was featured in Series 2, Episode 5 of the Australian True Crime and Television Series, Crime Investigation Australia, which aired on Foxtel's Crime and Investigation Network as well as Channel 9. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. You'll also be seeing two other videos for you to check out. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.